So here we're on the fourth turn, or the beginning, you know, the end of the fourth turn of Twilight Struggle. Uh, this is my first playing again, and I'm beginning to get a better feel for what the game's about. Uh, I spent some time looking at the rule book, uh, the uh, very, very detailed uh, first few turns of uh, of a tournament game between, I guess, the top couple players. And I'm beginning to see how it's played. It's actually a very simple game in terms of the uh, the mechanics of how you start building up, you know, your power base uh, in the game. Where you know there is some uh, a significant effect on of the terrain on the game in terms of what's connected to what and what is able to touch what. I like that factor about it. Uh, it would be way too simple without the cards. <laughs> but with them, it, it does make a nice mix, and I can see why this is such a popular game. Still have my objections about the fixed values of the cards. They are also kind of a difficult thing to play with, solitaire, like I've said. But not too bad. Okay. So here's... Uh, these were the headline events, and here's what we start to see. Um, the ask not what your country can do for you. This is a, a really... Your opponent can kill the bury this card very easily. That's another thing I, I, I sort of learned. The idea of... And again, I mean, if I thought about the game carefully, I'm sure I could come up with these things, but if you, uh, if you play some of these events that removes them from the game, well, then there's not as many cards in your favor. Now, in the early war, I think that's even more important, and I don't think you want to use your events too much in the early war, which is kind of weird again. You know, there's mechanical stuff that's not really creating the historical situation, and there's reasons that you're holding events and not playing them that don't make a lot of sense. On the other hand, if you're holding your opponent's events, you have to activate them. So that's kind of cool. Uh... And let me see. Uh, Soviets got knocked out of the Middle East. That, that was pretty much the big issue. Uh, that was the... Uh, the Voice of America card. They pushed them out just before the U.S. played its scoring uh, card. Uh, but they have made a major inroads into Central America. Um, nothing in South America yet. And they played their China card in order to pretty much grab all of Southeast Asia for when that comes around. Uh, they played that because they're holding the Nixon plays the China card card, and uh, they knew they were losing China anyway, so giving up two victory points is what it turned up, is the cost that it turned out to be to gain all of this, given that they're losing China anyway. So, it seemed like a good move. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm not sure I'm going to do every turn. We'll see.